Do I need all these Microsoft Visual C++ redistributables? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com, where I've been answering questions, not unlike this one, since 2003. This is a question that comes up from time to time when people are struggling to find disk space. And what they find is that on their machine are multiple copies of something called the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable. Let's take a quick look at the machine. So this is my Windows 10 home machine, and actually it's going to serve as kind of a counterexample. I'm going to settings and then in apps. And if I scroll down in apps, you'll notice that there's nothing listed here. I do not have the Microsoft Visual C++ runtime installed here. However, if instead I bring up the settings app for my main machine, the machine on which I have most of my tools and software installed, you'll see that I have no fewer than 10 different copies of Microsoft Visual C++ redistributables. Now, the big difference between these two machines is that the first one, the Windows 10 Home machine, is actually a fairly pristine machine. I don't have anything uh, out of the ordinary installed on it. It's meant as a demo machine. On the other hand, the settings that you're looking at right now are actually for my main desktop machine. This is the machine on which I have all sorts of software installed, and that's where this comes from. In fact, if you take a look, you can see that I have lots and lots and lots and lots of things in the apps and features list. That is what results in the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable being installed on this machine. So just what is this redistributable? Well, C++, first off, is a programming language. It's a programming language that programmers use to write software that runs on Windows and on other platforms. Visual C++ is Microsoft's set of tools for programmers using C++. It includes tools that essentially translate or what's called compile the C++ instructions that programmers write into the .exe and .dll and other files that Windows actually understands. Redistributables are the common software that Microsoft has pre-written that is included with Microsoft Visual C++. Programmers using Microsoft Visual C++ can make use of what are called standard libraries. These are libraries of pre-written software provided by Microsoft that programmers don't have to reinvent. The software is already there and available and thoroughly tested so that programmers can simply use it rather than having to rewrite it. A very simple example might be a function to change a string from a mixed upper and lower case to all be uppercase. Again, rather than forcing every programmer who might need such a function to write one from scratch, there's a, such a function simply provided in the standard libraries. Redistributables are those libraries packaged up in such a way that they can be redistributed by third parties, by the people who actually write or provide the software that is installed on your machine. So, for example, if I go and get, I don't know, say Photoshop. I don't know that Photoshop uses these, but they could. What they do then is when they install their application, if they see that the C++ redistributables are not already installed, they can install them. On the other hand, if they're already installed, perhaps by another application that uses them already being installed on your machine, there's no need to install them again. However, things get confusing. And the reason they get confusing is because there are so many different versions. On my machine, for example, you'll see that I have versions that are labeled 2010, 2012, 2013. There's even one labeled 2015 through 2019. In addition to those variations, there are variations based on bitness. In other words, there's the x86 or 32-bit version of a library, as well as the x64, 64-bit version of a library. Now, on the surface, one would think, one would hope, that installing a more recent version of the library, say the 2015 to 2019 version, would supersede the previous versions, like the 2012 version or the 2010 version. 
Unfortunately, for a variety of reasons that are exceptionally complicated, that's not the case. The 2015 to 2019 version does not replace the prior versions that are installed on the machine. Those have to be left around. And to be clear, the 10 different ones that I have installed on my machine, that's not at all uncommon for machines that have any reasonable amount of software additionally installed on them beyond just Windows. So the question is, do you need them? And the short answer is, we don't know. It depends. It depends on what software you have on your machine. If you have software installed on your machine that requires, say, the 2012 x86 version of the redistributables, then you need them. If you don't, you don't. But one would think, again, that uninstalling the software that uses a particular version of the redistributables would then also uninstall that version of the redistributables. The problem is that if you have multiple packages, multiple different software packages installed that all use the same version, say, for example, I have two applications that are installed that both require, both rely on the 2012 x86 redistributable. When you uninstall the first one, you don't want to install the re redistributable because the second one still requires it. If you uninstall both, it would be nice if the redistributables were uninstalled as well. Unfortunately, there's actually simply no pragmatic or reliable way to know that when you uninstall a piece of software, that's the last piece of software that needs this redistributable. The only thing that is safe for a software uninstaller to do is to leave it behind. So, is it worth investigating any of this? Well, the short answer is that in my opinion, it is absolutely not. While it might seem like there's a lot of software, like I said, my 10 versions of the Microsoft C++ redistributable, in reality, and certainly compared to other things on your machine, they don't take up as much disk space as you might expect. And if they're not being used, they are not impacting your system's performance. It's only a disk space issue. If you are fighting a disk space issue, you are better served by using tools that will tell you what's using so much disk space. The article, Where's My Disk Space Going? walks through exactly that using a free tool you can download to install and then actually analyze the disk space being used on your machine and identifying who the disk space hogs are. That's a much more effective way than trying to understand what the Microsoft C++ redistributables really are. Certainly, you can try uninstalling a redistributable. The risk is that you will break one of the applications on your machine. It simply won't work. That's too high a risk for me and certainly not for any reasonable amount of return. What that means is my advice to you is to simply ignore all of the different Visual C++ redistributables on your machine. I know it seems like there's a lot, but really it's not that impactful and the risk of trying to remove them is simply too high. Now, I do have to be clear. There is, in fact, one way and the only way I know of to make sure you have only the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributables that you need. And that is back up your machine, reformat, reinstall Windows from scratch, reinstall your applications from scratch, and then restore your data from wherever. What you'll be left with when you do this is only the redistributables that were required by the applications you installed. That's it. That's a pretty painful solution to what I think is not really that big a problem. I hope that was helpful. I hope that helps you focus your efforts on trying to find disk space. Like I said, my advice is to leave well enough alone and try and solve the disk space problem some other way. For the article on which this video was based, for links related to the topics, for any updates and comments on that article, visit askleo.com 4854. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.